Hello YouTube, thanks for having me back. I'm Charlie, and today I'm going to be talking to you about the movie Taken, how its terrible ideology is justified in all sorts of bizarre ways. But first, I need to talk about a different film. A dark fable about a person with relationship troubles who witnesses a ritual suicide and then is slowly inducted into a pagan cult whose colorful trimmings hide a penchant for violence. I am of course talking about the 1994 Tim Allen Christmas movie The Santa Claus. The Santa Claus is an iconic example of a film category I'm personally obsessed with. The Good American Dad movie in which a hard-working dad loves his kid but struggles to overcome his own feelings of bitterness and disappointment with his life. Usually because his lack of emotional maturity has driven his wife into the arms of an effeminate intellectual whose relationship with his kid is a source of constant sarcasm and jealousy. In these movies, the dad is a loving parent, but his flaw is his discontentedness with his life. But in the course of the movie, he learns a valuable lesson about what's truly important and is able to open up and reconcile with his family. Case in point, the Santa Claus. Scott Calvin is a corporate toy salesman who's embittered with his lot in life. His wife, Laura, is now dating or married to a mincing psychiatrist who really gets under Scott's skin, especially since Scott is a masculine-coded American man who thinks that psychiatry is girly or whatever. Scott's son, Charlie, doesn't even want to spend Christmas Eve with him for reasons that aren't super well established but probably have to do with Scott spending most of his time working at his corporate soulless gig. But then, on the eve of Christmas, Scott and Charlie are transported to the North Pole where Scott is presented with irrefutable proof of magic. At first, Scott cannot accept this reality as it clashes with his dour, disappointing view on life. But in the course of the movie, he literally becomes Santa Claus and is forced to accept magic in his heart again. And so he becomes a better version of himself, a better father, a better man, who is able to provide the emotional support that his family has been missing all this time. He even resolves things with the psychiatrist. The end. I don't know, maybe this movie has aged badly. I haven't seen it in a while, but from what I remember, it's a pretty sweet, heartfelt film. But now let's imagine a different version of this movie. Maybe one written by the real life Tim Allen. In this version of the movie, Scott Calvin's attitude is completely in the right. The world is just as magicless as he believes it is. His wife is a complete monster of a person with no redeeming traits, and her new husband's feckless intellectualism and his lack of masculinity actively places Charlie in danger. Like, let's say they send Charlie to a psychiatrist who turns out to be a cannibal who eats children. You see? Based reactionary Scott Calvin was right about psychiatry all along. This is what happens. And then for some reason, the only way for Scott to save his kid is to use his position as a corporate big shot to like sue the psychiatrist and <laughs> close down his practice. Thus affirming that Scott's job is great and there was never any problem with him spending all of that time there. You would say to me, what a horrible idea for a film. Why would you make a movie about a dude who learns absolutely nothing about himself or the world? And I would say to you, it's finally time to talk Taken, baby. Taken is a dual English and French action film from 2008 starring Liam Neeson as ex-CIA agent Brian Mills. It differs from the Santa Claus here and there in tone, maybe, but it postures itself as the same kind of good American dad movie. Brian's relationship with his 17-year-old daughter Kim is not what he wants it to be. During the long stretches of time where Brian was overseas committing war crimes, his wife Lenore left him for a, a rich intellectual snob named Stuart. And like the Santa Claus, this movie traces Brian's reconciliation with his family, but it completely messes it up. Don't get me wrong, I kind of love this movie for its brazenness, its complete lack of self-awareness as it completely 
ruins itself, committing to one of the ugliest ideologies I've ever seen put on screen. All right, let's get into it. So the first thing to say about Taken is, boy oh boy does it want you to hate Lenore. In the first scene you see them in together, Brian goes to Kim's birthday party and Lenore inexplicably accosts him and like tries to prevent him from giving his birthday present or even talking to Kim. Then she belittles his gift in front of their daughter and then for some reason protests when he goes to take a photo of her with his disposable camera. We have a professional photographer, Brian. Yeah. One for the book. Oh, we have a professional photographer. Big smile, sweetie. No reason. No reason given. She's just, uh, she's just a bitch. She's just a bitch. Brian, meanwhile, is presented in a 100% sympathetic light. The Santa Claus wanted you to side with Tim Allen, but in the first 10 minutes, it at least showed him lying to his wife, spending too much time in his job, being immature and sarcastic, not being able to properly provide a dinner for their kid. Scott Calvin had flaws, not so with Brian Mills. Sure, he's dissatisfied with retirement, but he loves his daughter so much that he's willing to sacrifice his happiness just to reconnect with her. And then when Kim needs Brian's written permission to take an unsupervised trip across Europe with her friend, Brian expresses the trepidation of a man who spent a lifetime fighting, in his own words, bad guys. I know the world, sweetie. He tells her, I'm not willing to put my daughter at risk. To this, Lenore just says, you're pathetic, in the meanest voice imaginable. Lenore is baffling in this scene. Yes, Brian's reservations are, are an expression of this film's Americentric xenophobia, but it's also not unreasonable to, to have some trepidation about your 17-year-old daughter going off with a friend by herself. With This idea has just been sprung on him. But Lenore does not have any worries whatsoever about her, her, her daughter going off by herself with another teenager. Because she's not a character. Unlike Laura and the Santa Claus, whose motivations are always identified as she cares about Charlie, Lenore's only motivations in this movie is to just, just, she hates Brian for no reason. She just wants to antagonize Brian. Women, right? The script treats Kim and her friend like, like idiots as well. As soon as they land in the airport, the first weird dude who approaches them, they immediately get into a taxi with him and take him back to their apartment where they're staying and tell him where they're living. Because if there's one thing I know for sure about teenage girls is that they've never had any experiences that would give them any sense of self-preservation at all when a strange man approaches them in an airport. But everybody in this world, especially the women, have to be naive children compared to Brian frickin' Mills. And then Kim and her friend are kidnapped and sold into sex slavery, of course. And Brian, you know, has a certain set of skills and the rest of the movie is just him running around killing and torturing people. Honestly, this part of the movie is like the most boring part. Brian is never in any peril. It's less of an action movie than just scene after scene of Brian inflicting horrific brutalities on cartoonish foreign villains who definitely deserve it. You can tell because of their accents. The torture, of course, is justified and shown to absolutely work, as it always is in these kinds of movies. But Taken takes it even a step further with how much Brian seems to relish the torture. At one point, he brags about how creative a torturer he is. And then he finds the most painful, least humane way of executing someone imaginable after he's already extracted all the information he needs from him. But this movie doesn't even pretend to stop and question his methods because it is fully ideologically aligned with Brian Mills, with the CIA, and with the idea that men have to get a little bloody to protect their kin. Lenore, meanwhile, is reduced to a pitiful, sobbing mess. She has no idea what to do, and she's so sorry for how she acted, and it honestly takes on this sort of gross male power fantasy element. Like, boy, will my ex-wife be sorry for how she talked to me when our daughter gets kidnapped. I guess it's good that I spent all of that time away from home. You see, Lenore, I'm the good guy. I've always been the good guy. 
in the end, of course, Brian saves his daughter. And it's kind of hilarious the length the movie goes to to not have Kim at all participate in her own rescue. At the climax, there's this point where she's being held by knife point by the sheik who has purchased her. Quick aside, I don't have time to unpack this in this video, but yes, this is one of the most racist films I've ever watched. So the sheik has her by knife point and Brian is like pointing the gun and she's just like, daddy, daddy. And even though I had watched this movie up to this point, I still somehow expected that she was gonna like, you know, stomp on his foot or kick him in the shins or like signal with her eyes to Brian because, you know, he taught her. You know, he taught her everything she knows. He taught her how to survive. Something. But no, Brian just then executes just a perfect headshot. <laughs> no clever twist, nothing for him to confront, not even a yippee ki -yay to call back to. Just bang. Brian Mills, perfect man, saves the day again. And that's taken, baby. On the one side, you have Brian Mills, racist state torturer and great dad. And on the other side, you have his inexplicably vicious and useless ex-wife and her even more useless husband. Actually, that's not true. He's not really more useless. He still helps more than she does because he's a man. <laughs> I don't have time to talk about that. <laughs> and on the other side, you have his vicious ex-wife, his helpless virginal daughter, and of course, her, her slutty best friend who I, I didn't even mention this, but... Don't worry, she is murdered halfway through the movie and then never spoken of by any character again. And everyone is sorry at the end for having ever doubted him. All right, conclusion. What are dad movies for anyway? At its best, the good American dad movie is a really compelling category of film. Dad movies are a sympathetic examination of the loneliness of masculinity. They're an expression of a man's desire to find deeper fulfillment from a world that he's closed himself off to. Being a grown-up is hard. Being a man is also hard in all sorts of interesting ways. Scott Calvin is a man who never learned how to cook, never learned how to be emotionally honest with his feelings, never learned to really connect with his family, and as a result, he is suffering. His commitment to hardened masculinity is going to cause him to lose the only thing that really matters. Dad movies invite us to criticize and even laugh at how debilitating traditional ideas of fatherhood are. And then they provide a path for rehabilitation and redemption. Taken sets itself up like it's a dad movie, but it isn't. It's just an unusually humorless violence fest that has nothing critical to say about violence or about men or about fatherhood. The most hilarious part of the whole movie comes right at the end when Stuart asks Brian if he needs anything and Brian just smiles wistfully at his daughter hugging Lenore and he goes, I have everything I need. <laughs> but like, what? What does that mean, Brian? He delivers that line like the movie had been about him needing to let go of all the other things in his life in order to be there for Kim. But he had already been doing that at the beginning of the movie. He also sort of delivers it like things are gonna be okay now between him and Lenore, but he has not done a shred of work to identify or fix whatever problems existed in their marriage. He hasn't changed at all because he doesn't have to change. Everybody else had to change around him. He was a good dad already. He was right about everything and he saved the day. Hooray. In the Santa Claus, the good dad had to learn to also be a good man. In Taken, he already was one. And that last line just serves as this ridiculous, contextless, piece of dialogue from an alternate version of this movie where it was actually written by a scriptwriter who was interested in telling a story and not by real life Tim Allen, so to speak. Thanks so much for watching. I hope my certain set of skills were adequate here. Please, uh, if you like this, subscribe, comment, click the bell icon. Uh, if you, and also if you hate this or you disagree with me, also comment. 
like, let's, let's talk about it. Let's, let's talk Taken, baby. The conversation never ends. This has been Charlie Monroe from New 32 Productions. Yippee-ki-yay.